Seven-seater MPVs, love them. Every brand has them. We're here now in Bridgetown, which, by the way, is home to the world's largest obstacle course, to review another one. This one is Hyundai's version. Let's take a trip through the orbits and check out the Stargate. How exactly does the Stargazer perform on the road? Thankfully, we have ample room today to test it out. Bridgetown Boulevard is the main road along Bridgetown that stretches for one kilometer and spans six lanes. It's got dedicated bike lanes, pedestrian lanes, and it even includes a bridge, as the name implies. You'll know when you see it, because right next to it is a 20-story high art installation called Victor, designed by film artist Hefre. Now let's discuss ride comfort. The Stargazer sits on 16-inch tires and rides on McPherson struts up front and a CTBA in the back. As far as 7-seater MPVs go, it's a little on the firm side. If the road's flat, it's not really much of an issue, but the moment you come across a slight bump, then you'll tend to feel it right down the spine. Now, as far as the handling goes, it's pretty good, actually. This setup gives you a healthy amount of feedback on turns. There's a little bit of body roll on turns, but overall, it's not too bad. Normally, in this kind of segment, you don't expect that much feedback from your steering. It's all kind of soft, very city-centric. Its emphasis is on comfort rather than driving performance, but here, Hyundai's done a good job of balancing the two. The Stargazer runs on a 1.5-liter engine, pretty standard for the segment, that puts out 113 horsepower and 144 newton meters of torque. This is paired to an intelligent variable transmission, basically Hyundai's version of a CVT. In terms of power delivery, there is a little bit of lag in the lower rev ranges, but once you get past those lower rev ranges, the power delivery is pretty good actually. So I'm just put an example here, put my foot down, a little bit of lag, and then power delivery is pretty good. If you don't want that lag, you can easily switch it to sport mode, but for me, normal mode does a fine enough job. I can imagine if we were on the highway, having to overtake, it wouldn't be much of an issue. The lag doesn't last for very long. Unfortunately, the brakes don't live up to the same standard. That's not to say there isn't ample stopping power here. There is. It just doesn't come on very quickly. And the pedal has a spongy feel to it with very little travel. So you put your foot down, you want to stop, brakes are taking that time and you really have to press hard, but your foot's not actually moving. The uh, path of travel is very minimal. Let's go over things here in the cabin. The most striking thing is this plastic housing here that sort of connects the 8-inch the infotainment screen and the gauge clusters here. It kind of hampers visibility a little bit. I get what Hyundai was going for, but it forces you to really use the seat height adjustment because when I first got into it and the seat was a little lower, I had trouble seeing all the way across. Now going back to this 8-inch infotainment screen, it does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, pretty standard stuff. A telling sign that this unit was converted from right-hand drive is the fact that the volume knob sits on the right side. Not exactly intuitive if you're the one driving. On the plus side, you do get big blocky buttons here, physical buttons, so that does help. You don't have to use the touchscreen all the time. Moving down to the bottom, there is a big hazard button here. Kind of cool, it's shaped like a triangle, hard to miss. Aircon, doesn't come with the automatic aircon unfortunately, but you do get easy to use adjustable knobs. Very handy, very easy to use while you're driving. Down here, you get a USB charging port and a 12 volt ladder port as well. Now let's take a look at the steering wheel a little bit. You've got controls all across. There's controls here for the infotainment, music, volume, all that. Cruise control here on this side. Uh, lane keep assist and the steering wheel it has a I guess you could call it a four spoke shape it's got these two nubs here connecting down to the bottom if you're the type who likes to drive like this first of all why second of all it does force you to really use that safe nine and three grip which is a good thing next to the shifter drive mode button and traction control button here shifter nice and wide easy to grip easy to shift easy to use uh, more on storage here has this little, I don't know what to call it, this little envelope type of cubbyhole. Big enough to fit a phone, but 
probably not much else maybe some folded documents or something but that's about it for that and then here is a more standard glove compartment oh and there's also ample storage here so Hyundai's really gone on gone in on the storage thing here so you see big enough to house your gadgets although if you need it to stick you might want to put some matting or some rubber padding here just to make it stick this is mostly leatherette leatherette here leatherette here comfy actually the seats aren't too tight they do have side bolsters but you know for my weight about 150 pounds it's not too bad it doesn't sink into my sides here everything else is hard touch plastic for the segment for the price overall build quality it's it's pretty good one thing I don't like here is this fully digital instrument panel. Digital speedometer, yeah, whatever, fine. Warning signals, all the rest of it, yeah, okay. But a digital tachometer, what this does is the numbers increase as your revs increase, naturally. But then there's these blue lights surrounding the thing that increase in number and grow closer to the center as you, uh, you know, increase in speed, increase in revs. It's not exactly intuitive and it you don't really look for a number on a tachometer when you're driving not really you're you know you're used to that manual needle moving granted this is cvt revs are kind of inconsequential but you know it's just a necessary step for me something that could go broken quite easily that i'm just not fond of move on to the second row seats I'm roughly about 5.5 5, 150 pounds headroom very very generous legroom as well it's quite spacious back here actually and like the front seats these are wrapped in leatherette you could probably fit three of me here quite comfortably and you can fold them down and slide them forwards and backwards other conveniences here include this food tray if you wish to eat or drink while on the road and you have four dedicated aircon vents here as well. In terms of storage, you've got these cup holders here and you've got uh, bottle holders here, enough for you know your standard clean canteen water bottle or something like that. And you've also got two USB charging ports here and a storage cubby here. Okay, now if there's only two of you here and you don't really want the middle passenger involved, no, sorry, okay, that doesn't make sense. Now there's only two of you here and you want an armrest, you do have the option of folding down the middle backrest and converting that into an armrest. In terms of headrest, the seat is a little on the low side but you can easily adjust the headrest back so you can rest your head like this. Okay, let's check out the back. Pretty standard stuff here, what you can do with these middle seats, they are fold. Mm -hmm and tumble. There we go, now we find ourselves in the third row seats. Like the front, headroom isn't as generous, but considering where I am right now, it's, it's okay. Legroom, uh, a little on the tight side. Um, I'm not very tall, but you know, the front passengers do have the option of moving the seats forward, so they can help you with that. Width-wise, two of me would fit here. Please, elbow room-wise, just fine. There's still a little bit of carry over here in the seats where my thighs finish, so yeah, I think you can fit two of me here fairly comfortably. So let's go over the design. Things I like, the big grill. Yeah, granted, it plays into the whole big grill trend, but I think Hyundai really pulls it off here. Another thing I like, this thin LED strip up the front. And another cool thing, which really makes the car look like a flying saucer, this high belt line. Now granted, it doesn't do the car any favors when it comes to visibility when you're sitting inside, but on the outside, looks great.
Before we get into the Stargazer's pros and cons, let me tell you a little bit about Bridgetown. Bridgetown Boulevard is currently open to traffic from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. By the end of 2023, a new road called West Drive will provide access between Bridgetown Boulevard and Ortigas Avenue. The Hyundai Stargazer has a couple of things going for it, namely its design. In the seven-seater MPV segment, it's hard to stand out in the looks department because all the designs tend to be very pedestrian, very suburban, very tame. This is about as stylish as the segment gets. Another thing it has going for it is interior space. Compared to other vehicles in the segment that I've had the pleasure of driving and sitting in, this is one of, if not the most spacious, and that goes for the front seats, the middle seats, and the back seats as well. Lastly, driving dynamics. Again, it's hard to stand out in a department that's not emphasized in the seven-seater MPV segment, but here Hyundai has done a great job of mixing performance and comfort into one convenient package. Now for the cons. One of them is visibility. Yes, that high belt line looks great on the outside, but once you're inside, you do sacrifice quite a bit in terms of being able to see the road and the cars around you. And another one is ride comfort. While it might not be the most uncomfortable vehicle out there, it is definitely an inherent flaw in this one. The base Stargazer retails for 1,038,000 pesos. The mid-spec variant retails for 1,168,000 pesos. And this top spec GLS IVT premium variant, it goes for 1,258,000. With the Stargazer, Hyundai has put together a comprehensive package with a few inherent flaws that don't really take away from what is ultimately a great offering in the segment. I give this one an 8.5 out of 10.